The PAR 6400 calorimeter is used to measure the heats of combustion, specifically higher heating value, in calories per gram or megajoules per kilogram, for example. A sample is burned in a high pressure 450 psi oxygen atmosphere within a metal pressure vessel, or bomb. The energy release is absorbed within the calorimeter and the resulting temperature is recorded. Make sure oxygen and air cylinders are open and set to the appropriate pressures. 450 psi for oxygen and 80 psi for air. Gas cylinders should be open and closed within the main valves rather than the dial on the regulators which they are already set to the correct pr pressure. Turn on the printer, switch on the right side. Turn on the instrument, switch on the back of the instrument, and wait for the screen to load to the main menu. On the calorimeter operating submenu, toggle the heater and pump button to on. Wait for the jacket temperature to reach 30 degrees Celsius, 10 to 20 minutes. The internal water holding reservoir should be full. This is checked by removing the red plastic cover on the tank fill opening on the back of the instrument. Water should be just visible on the bottom of the tank fill inlet. If more water is needed, add distilled water. Make sure the external pressurized rinse tank has sufficient water. To check this, the tank has to first be depressurized. Make sure the air cylinder is closed so that the air is no longer flowing from the cylinder to the rinse tank. And then open the black vent valve on the rinse tank by moving it to the upright position. Wait until the air has stopped venting. Then open the rinse tank by lifting up on the handle holding the lid in place. To remove the lid, lower it slightly and twist to maneuver out of the tank. If the tank is less than half full, fill with distilled water. Replace lid and lock down handle to make sure it is sealed. Close the black vent valve. You will want to make sure to have sufficient clean sample cups and cotton strings available. You'll want to make sure the printer has paper and the benzoic acid standardization tablets and mineral oil are available. Two standardization values are used in each run, the energy equivalent EE factor and the spike HHV. The instrument should be recalibrated if there are any changes to the components, like a different bomb vessel is installed, or if a quality control run of benzoic acid is found outside the acceptable deviation. Standardization tables are found in Chapter 6 of the owner's manual. Do one or more measurements of the benzoic acid under determination mode. Compare the average HHV to values in table 6-1 joules per gram on pages 62 to 63 of the operation manual. If the average deviates from the listed value less than the maximum possible deviation, the instrument does not need to be recalibrated. If the average deviates more than the permissible deviation, more observations may be taken, especially if only one observation was used the first time. Otherwise, the instrument needs to be recalibrated. Use the same procedure as when doing a quality control check, except that the operating mode button on the calorimeter operation menu should be toggled to standardization instead of determination. After 10 standardization runs are completed successfully, go to the calibration data and controls menu and open the BOM1 submenu, which will list the current EE value number of runs, EE relative standard deviation, and the bomb fire count. Press the Upstate Statistics button. If a different spike or a new bottle of mineral oil is to be used for the spike, the spike HHV must be calibrated. This is done by running 10 samples of the same amount of spike and obtaining an average heat of combustion. Once this value is obtained, it must be entered on the operations control menu under spike controls, then heat of combustion of spike.
Once the jacket water has warmed up, the bar on the bottom of the screen will become green and the start pretest button will be available. Make sure that the sample holder is locked into the bomb canister to seal the vessel and that the lid is closed. Run a pretest, fill and rinse cycle by pressing the start pretest button. Once the pretest is finished, run an EE quality control check. Place a clean, wiped out metal sample cup on the balance and tear weight of the sample cup. Add your biomass. If a spike is needed, tear weight of sample cup and sample. Add about 0.4 grams of mineral oil using the dropper, 15 to 20 drops, trying to cover as much of the sample surface as possible. Record weight of spike. Once instrument is in idle mode again, Open lid and carefully remove sample holder by rotating counterclockwise to unseal from bomb canister and lifting out. Place full sample cup in sample holder. Prepare a fresh cotton string wick by looping a piece of pre-cotton string around the ignition wire at the bottom of the V-shape, twisting the string around itself slightly and placing the edges of the string on the top of the sample. The goal is to have the string connecting that what will be the hottest part of the ignition wire to the sample so that the string will ignite and pass the flame down to the sample. Carefully lift the sample holder with a sample cup out of the stand and place into calorimeter, setting it in the bomb can and rotating it clockwise until it seals into place. Close the lid of the calorimeter. On the calorimeter operation menu, make sure that the operating mode reads determination, then press the start button. A screen will ask if the current ID is to be used. Enter a new sample ID using the shift on shift button to toggle between letters and numbers. IDs should be descriptive, unique, and end in a number that indicates the number of replicates that have been run. For example, R O eleven thirty eleven one would be Red Oak, first replicates, run on November 30th of 2011. After entering a sample ID, enter sample weight in grams and press enter. For spike weight, enter weight of mineral oil added in grams, or if not using mineral oil, type in zero and press enter. This should start the analysis run. Use the calorimeter operation screen if you want to monitor the run. From this screen, the temperature graph button will display the bucket and jacket temperatures with time. The run is divided into pre-period, oxygen pressurization, time, firing, and post-period, combustion, temperature, equilibration, measurement, rinse cycles, and lasts about 10 minutes. The instrument gives two sets of beeps during a run one right before firing, and one right before first rinse cycles. Rinse cycles use pressurized water, so the venting process can be quite sudden and loud. To stop a run in progress, press the abort button. You'll wait until the status in the calorimeter operation menu returns to idle, and the bar is green before opening the calorimeter. If there was a misfire, a misfire error message will be given. In general, the run can simply be restarted and the misfire noted in case there are any unusual results. After a run is complete and the status on the calorimeter operation menu returns to idle, open the calorimeter lid and carefully twist and lift off the sample holder. Inspect the sample holder and inside of the canister for residue. There will often be ash materials remaining in the sample cup but residue in other places can signal a spill out of the cup during combustion. Remove printed tape from printer. Repeat test process for next sample. Make sure that the used sample cup has been removed for cleaning and the empty, empty sample holder replaced inside the instrument. Close the calorimeter lid. On the main menu, press the power button and confirm system shutdown. The screen will inform the user when it is safe to switch off the instrument. Turn off the instrument. Turn off the printer.
Close the gas cylinders by using the main valve, not the dial on the regulator. Clean all sample cups. Return supplies to drawer. Clean balance and surrounding areas. Cap and put away mineral oil and benzoic acid containers.